Hello, hello everyone. We are back for Jen's Den Art Acrylic 101. Say hello when you get here and welcome to the party. Hopefully y'all are all doing well today. And we are on day nine today. We are on day nine, and I am so super excited because y'all are rocking it. I want to share a few things with you today on our, hey everyone, say hi when you get here. Hello, Miss Patsy. Say hi when you get here. Give us a little sprinkle and some love. And I'm going to go to our Acrylic 101 group. And here we are. And we are going to give some shout outs really quick. Let me see if I need to. Let me do this really quick. Let's see what we got going on today. So we have a few people that have been painting. Hello, Facebook user and Miss Monica and Michael is back again. And Miss Sandra, tell us if you're a tribe sister or if you're a wannabe tribe sister or if you're just here learning for the first time, look at the shading on this painting. Miss Beth did an awesome job. Look at Miss Beth. How much fun was that? This almost looks like a shooting star. Did you see that? Look how cool that looks. So this is what we did last night. Hello, Miss Barbara and Melanie and Laura from Alabama and Angela. Hey, I'm having a blast doing this. I told my husband last night, I told Michael last night, I said, this is so much fun. It brings me back to my teaching days when I was um, a student teacher. I was a supervising teacher and I supervised the first year teachers who, you know, who were in their last semester in college. And it was the most rewarding part of my job was to be able to be there for those beginners um, and teach them, you know, the little baby steps involved. So that's kind of what we're doing here. And I am so loving it. It is so much fun. So Miss Mary has a beautiful painting. I'm hoping y'all can see this pretty decent. Let me see if I can get another one. This is someone who painted something a while back. Miss Dawn. She painted a night sky and a different scene. Look at this one, Miss Jill. Look at Miss Jill's work. I know there's some glare on there. I'm sorry, y'all. That's just all my light to have. Hello, Miss Beth. Rainy in Florida. Oh, Michael, you see, now you're hooked. You're going to be hooked now. Watch out. It always happens like that. Hey, Miss Karen. Um, this is just someone, okay, well, that was me. That's the only ones I saw that were the painting from last night. I'm not sure if I missed any. Um, oh, I know where I saw some as well. Let me go back and see really quick. It was um, under my post. And I want to give a shout out to Miss Michael. Look at what Miss Michael did. It's her first painting ever. Her first painting ever. Is that not the most exciting thing that you ever want to experience? I love it. And look at her little shading on her trees. Doesn't it look awesome? That is just so exciting. Hello, Miss Jean or Miss Jean. I'm so sorry if I mispronounced your name. Oh, April, you are so nice. Thank you. Thank you. I love teaching. It is definitely my purpose in life and my passion. So I'm super excited about that. Here's another one. Ooh, look how fancy we got. Look at all the different colors and the, the highlights. I'm not sure. Faye Tucker, Miss Faye did a beautiful job on hers. Um, let's see if I can find any more. Yes. 
Look at Miss Monica. Oh, look, ooh, look how pretty all of her shading. And look at her moon, y'all. Look at that. Look at the orange around there. Isn't that beautiful? I love looking at y'all paintings there. And you see how everybody's painting is just a little bit different. Look at Miss Vera. I know it's sideways, but that's okay. We can fix it. Look at that. How pretty. Y'all are doing an awesome job. Oh, she finished. Okay, here's another picture. Let me see if I can get that off of there. Look, she finished her painting. Look how pretty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm so excited for y'all. I hope you're having as much fun as I am because I love seeing. Look at Miss Judy. Look at Miss Judy. Miss Judy, I'm going to tell you this one thing. Next time you do this, the splatter, make your paint more watery because you see how it's kind of, um, you see how it's kind of thick. When you do the splatter, make your paint really watery, almost like an ink, okay, or like a milk consistency. So, um, so yeah, that is the only thing I see that I would do different, but it is beautiful. And I think we saw Miss Beth's, yeah, we did see Miss Beth's because look at Miss Beth, it looks like a shooting star there. I just love that. Isn't that so awesome? Things happen that you don't even expect to happen. And it's just so awesome with, with art because everybody's is going to look different. And I just love it. I love it, love it, love it. Okay, so on to today. Today is a day of mixing colors and making yourself a color chart. Now, the first thing that um, you need to know if you are wondering about supplies the only supplies you need on hand are the supplies that you have, okay? So um, notice the first thing I have here is this chart. Now I have taken this chart and I dropped it in the Facebook group and it's basically just, you can make this with a ruler and a, a, a pen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a chart kind of similar to this, and it's a color chart. I use this color chart all the time. If I'm looking for a certain color that I want in a painting, and I, I'm just not sure how to mix to get that color, then I'll come here and I'll say, okay, well, I really like this color right here. And I want to incorporate that color. So what am I going to mix together to get that color? Well, I'm going to mix. Oops, I got some black paint on my on my color chart there. I'm going to mix yellow oxide and I'm going to mix cerulean blue to get that color. And I'm going to add some white. I'm going to show you how to do this. So you don't need those colors that I just said. What you need is any colors that you have in stock. So what I did was I pulled kind of like a rainbow of colors. I pulled a red, yellow, and let me show you what I pulled. I pulled the colors that I have in stock. So I pulled, let's just go through the rainbow. I pulled a red, which is, um, this one is a naphthol red light. Okay, a red, an orange that I have in, in this um, tube is a burnt sienna. Red, orange, yellow. My yellow is a cadmium, yellow, deep. Red, orange, yellow, green. Let's see what green I have. I have a phthalo green, which has a blue shade to it. Okay. And then I have my blues. I have a cerulean blue and an ultramarine blue. And then I have a deep magenta. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have seven colors, kind of like your rain, close to your rainbow colors, just any colors you have in stock. Pull those colors, okay, anywhere from five to ten colors, but the more colors you have, the longer this takes to do, okay. Also, I have my titanium white, I have my Mars black, or maybe this is ivory black, let me see which one it is, Perm it's actually called permanent black, Okay, and I have a brown, I have a burnt umber. So I'm going with white, black, brown. Okay, those are gonna go on the side. And then I'm going with these seven kind of like rainbow colors. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do on my chart, well, you know what, I think I'm gonna, 
I think I'm going to tape this down first so it doesn't move all over the place. So this is a really long process, but it's so much fun and it's so informative. And um, you can make tons and tons of color charts with the colors that you have in stock. You can make a large color chart like this one. You can make a small color chart. It just depends on how many colors you want to use to make your chart. Okay, so I'm going to take that down and then I'm going to take a pen and I'm going to start writing down the names of the colors. So this is naphthol red light. Okay, I'm going to start writing kind of fast because um, I don't want to bore you, you know, the whole time. So I'm going to write naphthol red light and then all the way down here, all the way at the bottom, I'm going to write the same one if I can figure out how to spell it. Naphthol red light. Okay, so I'm going to put that one on the side. And I'm hoping, yeah, y'all can see that. Red, orange. Okay, so this is a burnt sienna. And then all the way down here, I'm going to write burnt sienna. Okay, so let me keep these in order. Red, orange. My yellow is a cadmium. Yellow. Deep hue, if I want to write all of that, I can write all of that. Cadmium, yellow. Okay. My green is phthalo green. P-H-T-H-A-L-O green. P-H-T-H-A-L-O. I was a math teacher, not a spelling teacher or an English teacher, so... I'm not the best speller in the world, just to let you know. Cerulean blue. Cerulean blue. Okay, ultramarine blue. We almost done. If I could put me in fast motion, motion I would put me in fast motion. All right, let's do our deep magenta. Now, I dropped this template in, um, in the Facebook group, and I put it in day nine. I put it in day nine, and I dropped it in there twice. I dropped it in as a photo, and then I also dropped it in as, um, as a file, so you could look it up both ways. Okay, I'm not going to fill this entire chart out um, because it's going to take us forever and a day if we did that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to add, right here, I'm going to add white, black, and brown. Okay, so this is the first thing I'm going to do. I am going to take this naphthol red. All right, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with my naphthol red, and I'm going to put a bunch of little spots with my naphthol red on my, this is just my, um, my mixing palette. I'm just using some small mixing palettes so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill in where the naphthol red meets the naphthol, naphthol red. Okay, so you know how to use these kind of charts. Right here, this is just going to be the true color of this red, which actually this color almost has like an orangey tint to it. It's really, really beautiful. All right. So then, let me clean that off. Then I'm going to take each one of these colors, I'm going to leave the, the tops off of them because I'm going to be using them so much. So let me just go ahead and start 
taken all of these tops off, ready to go. And you're going to see how much fun this is. Okay, so I'm going to keep my paints all in line right here. Hopefully you can see them. All right, and then I'm going to take my burnt sienna. I'm going to put just a little tip of the burnt sienna. Just a little, kind of like half and half is what you're trying to do. Of the yellow, of the green, of the blue. Again, you can use any colors that you have in stock. It does not have to be the colors that I'm using. I'm just showing you what I'm doing so you can play around with it. And then here's my white, and then I'll come back later and do the other ones. But let's start here. So I'm going to take my burnt sienna and my naphthol. I think I need a little bit more burnt sienna because it's transparent. And I'm going to mix them together. I'm just using a little, a little flat paintbrush. Okay, and I'm giving myself a chart. I'm going to I'm going to put it in my um so I'm going to go naphthol light and burnt sienna down here and I'm going to fill this in. I'm giving myself a chart and I'm going to hang it in my on my wall so that I know in advance what these colors are going to do for me. Okay? So now let's mix my cadmium yellow and my red, and then I'm going to put that one down here. All right. You see, this is a very time consuming process. Now, I don't have to do it twice because I already know where these two meet. I'm going to do it here. I'm not going to go ahead and, um, and put it twice on here. So this one is very interesting. It is my phthalo green in my red, which y'all already know when you mix green and red, remember we talked about that already. When you mix that green and red together, you're going to get either a brown or a black, okay, because they're complementary to one another. Now I'm going to go with my red and blue. This is the cerulean blue. I'm going to put that one down. Okay, hello, Miss Claire and Miss Judy and Miss Connie and Sharon. Oh, I'm so glad y'all are having a good time. This is like I said, this is a this is something that I'm just gonna demonstrate for y'all, and then you can um you can go and use your own colors that you have because it's a very time consuming process but it's super, super fun. And this is the magenta and the red. And I'm gonna put this one, ooh, that's a really pretty color. It's like a really, really bright red. Okay, and then I am going to fill in, I'm, I started mixing the white. So I'm gonna fill in, see where the white the white is right here. So if I add white to my naphthol red light, what is it going to look like? And that is what it's going to look like. So let's continue with the red just a little bit more. I'm going to put another little splash of the red. It's actually like an orange red. It's not a, it's not a red red. Now I'm going to add just a teeny bit of black. If I can get my black to come out. I just put this black in this little, I like using these because it allows me to get just a teeny bit of paint out at a time. So I started gradually buying these containers because I do not know how to um, put a little bit of paint on a palette. I always put too much paint on my painting palette and I end up wasting a lot of paint. So I figured that if I bought those little tubes like that, those little um, jars, then maybe it would 
allow me um, an opportunity to save a little bit more of my paint than I've been doing. Yes, Miss Nona, it is a time consuming process and, and uh, it is something that is very, very helpful. Okay, this one is the brown and the red. So I'm gonna add that one right there. Okay. And I'm gonna skip around just a little bit because I'm, I don't wanna spend, this would probably take me like three hours if I really took my time and did it. So I'm going to go, I'm going to skip the burnt skin. I'm going to go to the cadmium yellow and I'm going to take my cadmium yellow. Four, five, let's see how many I need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I need ten little spots. All right. And then from there, I am going to go with cadmium yellow. I can start up here if I want to. So I'm going to go with my magenta and then you just come up with the best solution for you to do this. Oh, that's a pretty color. So cadmium yellow and deep magenta. Oh, that's a beautiful color. I'm going to put that one there. Clean that off. Then I'm going to go cadmium yellow and ultramarine blue. So let's just mix that a little bit. And put that one there. And see, you can start seeing how you get all of these beautiful shades of color that you can start using in your paintings. Let's do the cerulean blue. And that's a gorgeous color too. Aren't these pretty? All right, let's use the phthalo green. So I think you get the idea here when you do this. It's going to give you a lot of different um, variety. Instead of having to, you know, use trial and error every time you want to try to, you know, figure out a color. You can, um, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't do the cadmium yellow and cadmium yellow. So let's just grab that one really quick. Put that one on there. And then cadmium yellow and burnt sienna. This is going to be pretty. I love these two colors together. See how pretty that is? So one of my favorite colors to use, it's it's really popular to use as a, um, a base layer, that color there. Do you have eight basic colors you keep on hand? Yes, I do. Um, I do like to keep my eight basic colors on hand. Um, and this is an example of what that would be right here. Let's see, my naphtha red light. I'm not sure what I did with it. Here it is. Now this is gonna start. Um, be in a lot of different colors. Let's go to a blue and let's try a blue in here. So let's go to ultramarine blue. Okay. And you'll see that where our line is here. And I'm just going to show you. Okay. So this is burnt sienna and burnt sienna. 
And this is cadmium yellow and cadmium yellow. This is naphthol red light and naphthol red light. So when you keep on going up like this, it is the true color. Okay, so let me do those for you so you can understand what's happening here because you're gonna start repeating yourself if you keep on going the way I'm going. So let, let me show you what's gonna happen. So if I put my magenta and my magenta down right here, just my true color right there, and I put my ultramarine blue, just the true color by itself. I'm using a really cheap paintbrush that's not working out really well for me. And then I put my, let me just dot it on here, my cerulean blue. Okay, so I started repeating myself and I don't know if you saw that happening. Then your phalo green, just the true color down. And then of course your cadmium yellow and then your burnt sienna. So where's my burnt sienna? Here it is. All right. So here's something you can do to make it a little more interesting for yourself. So you see this line here, this um, diagonal line that we're creating. So notice this, I put burnt sienna and cadmium yellow right here, but then if you go this way and you go to cadmium yellow and burnt sienna, you're gonna be doing the same color again right here. And so you don't wanna do that because you don't need the, those combinations twice on your color chart. So basically, if you notice right here, and I'm just writing on here so you can see what I'm doing, right here is, is the actual, um, let me use a marker so you can see more of what I'm doing. I'm gonna make a stair, a staircase so you can see. All right, so all of my colors, All of my colors below this staircase are really the only ones that I have to fill out with those two colors combined. I do not have to fill out all of that area. So you can actually just have all of these. Now, here's something that you can do that I would suggest if you want to. You could do all of the colors either above it or below it, but Something else you could do is you can say, okay, I want to make that combination. So let's go back to the one I was talking about. Which one was it? The cadmium yellow and the burnt sienna. Okay, so I'm going to do cadmium yellow and burnt sienna again. But instead of just being, let me go ahead and find that. Instead of just being cadmium yellow and burnt sienna again, Let's add white with it. And now let's put that, oops, oops, oops. And now let's put that on our chart. So, hey, I just created my cadmium yellow and my burnt sienna, but I'm going to make myself a note and I'm going to say, okay, well, everything from this line up right here. See my little stair step? Everything from this line up includes white, includes white. So everything that you put in this area right here Add white to it. So you're going to be having three colors for everything that you do in this area. And now you can have, okay, well, here's burnt sienna and here's cadmium yellow, but here's burnt sienna and cadmium yellow with white added to it. So look at the difference in these two right here. So that can give you another variety. 
and your chart, you just have to make sure that your chart fits you and you can follow it and you know exactly what you're using. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and let's do our white all the way up here with all of my colors. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to take my little area here and I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, all right, well, what do I want to do? I want to make all of my whites with mixtures of whites. Okay, so I'm going to do my deep magenta. Okay, let's do the deep magenta and white. And let's see what that looks like. So you see how time consuming this can be, but it's so, it's so um, helpful when you actually have it and you're done with it. Because look at that, look at look what the white does to that deep magenta. This is the original deep magenta. And then this is with the white added to it. So now let's do this. Let's, because this is my stair and I already have the magenta and the white, then let's add ultramarine blue to it. And if I can find my ultramarine blue, there it is. I'm gonna come over here. And I already have that mixture. So let me just add one more color to it. So there's a lot of different ways you can organize it is what I'm trying to tell you. And then here is my ultramarine blue, my deep magenta, and remember everything above this step has an inclusion of um, white with it. Okay, so you have to just play with it and you have to just, you know, keep on going until you get all of your colors added. But I just want to show you, here's one that I made probably six months ago and I'm going to share this video with you as well. You'll see that I used crimson red, burnt sienna, yellow oxide, Cadmium yellow, phalo green, cerulean blue, ultramarine blue, magenta, dioxanine, dioxanine purple. And then I also did, I put a gloss medium at the end. And then I looked at all of the colors and you see how it created a transparency here. Okay. Then you can see what I'm talking about with all of the different these are all of the, the actual colors out of the tube. They go all the way up, all the way up here. And you see like I, I kind of, um, I boxed them off with some silver marker. So, and look what else I did. I put right here, plus W. So I did mine. This one I did a little bit different. I put plus W right here. So guess what that means? That means that everything below these, this stepping stone right here, these steps, that includes the color white in the mixture. So let's say I really love this color right here and I want to add that color to my painting. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I need to go grab my yellow oxide. I need to grab my cerulean blue and I need to grab my white to be able to get that color. Okay, so that is basically what I wanted to show you today. You can, um, again, I'll say it again, you can make as many of these charts as you want. You can make one chart with just different yellows. You can do whatever you want. You can have fun forever with these, okay? But like I said, give yourself some time because it takes a long time to actually make the chart, okay? So... 
Yes, I am mixing equal amounts of each. So Ms. Faye, you can do it different ways. You can make a chart where you do three quarters of this color and one quarter of that color, you know, but what I like to do is I like to mix half and half and it gives me a good idea of where I'm going because you know how many varieties there are of colors. If you start mixing them together, you can go on forever and ever and ever. So, um, Francisco, if you go to in the Facebook group, in the Free Acrylic 101 Facebook group, hit guide and go down to guide number 10. It's day nine. You will find the files in there. This is when you get to use all those paint brushes. Do you have eight basic colors? When I did the color wheel, I noticed some of the colors looked the same until they dried. A lot of times that happens, and especially when you're creating a chart, sometimes like look at this one, the cerulean blue and crimson red, it almost looks black, but when you add white to it, which is probably gonna be, let's see, cerulean blue and crimson red look at this so this is this is without the white and this is with the white okay so white always helps that color come to life um when you're trying to figure out what color it really is okay all right guys so does anybody have any questions yeah, this is this is just a fun project that you can do with your colors that you have on hand. You do not have to go buy any special colors. So it's a lot of fun. OK, guys, I I think we're done for today and we will be back again tomorrow. And we're going to start doing some practice painting. So I'm getting really excited about it. It's getting a lot more fun now that we kind of have the basics down, then we can start having some fun. OK, you're welcome for sharing. Thank you all, all for being here and I will see you all next time. Bye.